This maintenance kit really is pretty slick. It's the LG265 that I'm using here right from John Deere. You don't have to mess with trying to find all the right parts individually. The value is it's definitely worth it. Comes with a new oil filter. New air filter, air filter sock. Got two quarts of turf guard oil. We've got a new fuel filter, a couple of new spark plugs, and a maintenance record sticker. All right, for summer maintenance, for spring maintenance, oh boy, it's been a while since I've done a video. For spring maintenance on this machine, the first thing I'm gonna do is disassemble this cowl and clean it and make sure that any remnants of a rodent um, nests, you know, are removed. You can kind of see some grass sticking out of the fins around the motor. You know, you don't want that so we're going to uh, get the cowl off clean everything up uh, before we get it into full service for the year that's a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts and for these you don't need to remove them just loosen them enough so you can slide the cowl up And there is a fuel line uh, device here, which is a Phillips head that you can unscrew. You can just undo those two uh, Phillips heads and then just get this fuel line out from underneath that hook. Loosen up the air intake so that I can swing this around. Get that out of the way. I like to leave that on so I don't expose the carburetor to the grit. And then this guy will just pop right off. Except for that one. So there's the cowl off. Everything in here actually looks pretty clean. You can see down in the fins there, I do have some grass that's left over. And, oh yeah, on the left-hand side there, you can see a dead mouse right there. So we'll get all that cleaned up before we start the maintenance. So back on this side, I'm going to take these 10 millimeters out so that I have good access to the cylinder. Yeah, you can get that grass. The wires look okay. They didn't get chewed on. Now, I did store this with a lot of mothballs, but, you know, sometimes those mice can get stubborn. And anyone that's owned one of these knows that they love to live up there on the top. Kind of get that out of the way. Yep. Get him out of there. The deck. First thing you want to do is you're going to Gauge the deck lever, bring the knob all the way to the left so it goes down as low as possible. And then on each side here in the back are a couple of pins, cotter pins. You're going to take those off. There's two, and then So 
So take those pins off, those cotter pins out. And then to remove the pin, you kind of give it a tap in. Got a little screwdriver here to kind of finish the job. Pins are out from both sides. Then we're going to pull these pins out from the front. Side. Same thing on the other side. That'll give you better access to this front part. It's just as easy to take those pins off. And then from under here, you've got the one main belt. Slide it back out of the way of this arm. And you can pull it out. All right, this way now you've got great access. To your blades on the bottom. Take these out and clean them up. Drain the oil on this. It is right here. It's a plastic cover. Pop that guy off. Loosen up your oil fill tube to let that come out a little faster. And we can also get the oil filter off right here. And then what I like to do is I'm going to jack up this side so we can get all of that oil out. Easy enough. While the oil's draining, I'll take care of the air filter all right that's all set get the oil filter prepped let's put a little bit of oil in the filter and lubricate the gasket Tight. It's fair to say we got the majority of that oil out, so we'll close that up. About two quarts. We'll go ahead and get that oil filled back up. Alright, to check the oil on this, I'm just going to take this push it down, do not tighten it, and I still have more to go. You know, I know I took out 
drain the tank and before I just put two quarts in all the way, just want to check to make sure we got it all out. Yeah, we're just at the add line. I've got about half a quart left. Perfect. Right on the full line. The spark plug for this is a BPR4ES and should come gapped at 30 thousandths. Just do a quick check here. Yep, right at 30 thousandths. That looks good. As always, when threading in on aluminum, make sure you get the threads started before you get going too hard with your tools so you don't strip the threads in the head. Removing the fuel filter can be a little bit of a mess, but it's not the end of the world. So I've got some straight pliers and I'm going to take this clip and I'm pushing it down and away from me. And then, so I've got some angled pliers here, which I can put on either side of the hose and use that to push down and away away from the, the filter, have the new one ready to pop on, all right, and then we'll slide off this end, yeah, that, the rubber just gets kind of hard. Twist, push. And there we go. Get the new one on. Get the clamps back in place. A look at how much gook that filter is getting out of there. Definitely get those swapped out on a regular basis. So I've marked my service. I've got 164 hours on this machine. Here's today's date. The sticker originally says next service due, but I just like to mark the date and the hours of when I've done the service so I can keep track of it that way. come off with a 24 millimeter. Uh, I have an impact which makes it really easy. So just normal thread, so lefty loosey. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean up these leading edges. They're kind of ground up pretty bad so we'll clean those up.
So there are four spots on here that need grease. One is right here by the lifting mechanism. You have one on each steering knuckle. And then you have this one way underneath. That sometimes people miss. So make sure you put a couple of squirts in there. And then again on the one on the opposite side. Alright, slide this guy underneath and then hook up this back pin into the holding arm. So you probably have to lift up on this a little bit to get it to line up. Get it in from the back. And there you go. Safety pin in. This side's good. I'll do the same on the other side. All right, with those pins in, now I'm going to hook up the front. This is under some spring tension. With my right hand, I'm pushing up on that pulley to release that spring tension. And with my left hand, I'm kind of feeding the belt over the pulley. Everything looks good. Everything's on their respective pulleys. Now I'll come to the front. This, we'll hook this onto the come forward just a little bit. Decks installed. For the tires, you want 10 pounds in the rear. Okay, 10. And 14 in the front. Here it is, 14. Alright, this right here, if you're using the chute and the bag catchers, is probably the most important tip uh, that I did not have right for the first few years of owning this. Uh, make sure that your chute goes underneath this metal piece and that it fits nicely in that groove before I had it over the top and it just never quite sealed right and I was always getting clogs in the chute. So this is up over on the top. I'm in here, I'm aligned on the bottom. Hook the top in, back in there. And you'll, you should, you should not have to take this off to, to clean it out. Um, if, as long as you've got it, you know, again, underneath this metal, this metal thing. 
Another tip is if you have these seals continue to fall out and you're noticing grass kind of whipping all over because you don't have the seals in place, you know, take a look. Make sure that the seal itself is clear of any grass that's kind of died in there, taking up all that room. Get that stuff all out of there. And then take your pliers, just kind of squeeze it back together. You don't have to go overboard on this, but give it back a little bit of spring. Right, and on these, the cushion um, goes on the, uh, on the outside. And then just start with one edge and just work it in. Working it around. You'll feel it when it kind of clicks in nice. I'll let you know that you're in the right spot. We've gone through everything. Uh, one thing, I do leave the shroud off here. Uh, when I'm not using the mower, I'll put a bag of mothballs in there and the keys, I leave them all set right inside there so that next time I go to start it, I know to pop the hood open, pull out the mothballs, grab the keys, because inevitably this entire area gets filled with, uh, with mice. And I don't know, it's like it only takes a week for it to fill up. So we've swapped the oil, checked the oil, changed the filter, plugs, air filter, fuel filter, gone through, cleaned everything, sharpened the blades, tightened up the, uh, filled up the air in the tires, cleaned everything up. All right, let's see how she starts. choke. All right. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Hope it was helpful for you. Um, as promised, mothballs and keys. Uh, make sure that you won't get mice in your mower and that you also won't forget to take those mothballs out of there you can't start it without those keys so thanks for watching the video and good luck with your maintenance